Hey church, so here we are again in Romans 8. And here comes the passage about suffering. Let's go to Romans 8, verse 17. I'm going to read from 17 to verse 25. Quite a passage. And if we're children, then we're heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Wow! Whew. Suffering is a reality. Suffering is something that is part of this world. The Bible is not sugar-coated. Why else would there be entire books on suffering, like Job? Why else, would, or, or lamentations, why else would there be psalms that are devoted to the suffering of the righteous? It is a reality, but the bigger reality, that's what this text says, is the glory that is to be revealed through the sons of God and for the sons of God and in the community of the sons and daughters of God. God has seen you in Christ as fellow heirs with Jesus, meaning everything that he owns, everything that he's going to inherit, is going to be part of yours. Like, what is this? The whole world, everything. And this text here clearly in verse 21 says that creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. It means the whole world is waiting for, for heaven, for heaven to come and to be fulfilled in us. Now, this is true for heaven to come, but our task here on this world is not to just wait, it's to wait eagerly, it's to expect, it's to usher in heaven on earth. If you look at the world only as a, as a valley of groaning and suffering, only that, then you will just wait for it to be over. And God is just cruel for making this life so long. That's not the purpose of this life. Our purpose is to treat everything that we have as good stewards and bring in the kingdom of God into everything that he's given us. Work, money, relationships. And obviously this means that we are to fight suffering at, 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 at full strength. But... The world has not much to say about suffering else than we just need to get rid of it. The world has not much to say about suffering than let's just medicate it, um, get rid of it, deny it, <laughs> or, or, or compare it, say my suffering is bigger than yours. That's not what Christians do. Christians can see suffering as a means through the, the cross to glory. The suffering servant, Jesus, went through the cross to death and came out in glory and rose again on the third day and is now seated in heaven. That's our future. So that's it. that is our hope. On the other hand, if you look at suffering just as a, it's not there. If you deny it, you're just not biblical. Suffering is a part of life. The bigger reality is the glory that is to be revealed. And it's not just for the world to come. It's coming ahead of us. Our days ahead are going to be better than our days past. The best is yet to come. These are not just slogans. 
They're the reality of Romans 8 through the cross and the resurrection. Start to play, pray for the day ahead. Start to bless it. Start to ask God that he would show up, even if you're suffering right now, and that he would show his goodness on you today, tomorrow, and this whole week. Thank you for the promise of resurrection, that one day all tears will be wiped away. All suffering will be passed. All groaning will have found an end. Even nature that is, is broken in some way will be redeemed at the revealing of the sons and daughters of Christ. Amen. God bless you guys. See you tomorrow.